I'm going to be talking today about Strange Pleasures, which is uh, a project I carried out in May this year. Um, the purpose of the study was to investigate whether creative methods could be used to explore the role of contemporary jewellery in constructing embodied identity. So just to unpack some of those terms. Um, if conventional or fine jewellery is, uh, is all about status and um, financial capital, Contemporary art jewellery is all about uh, what Bourdieu describes as cultural capital, so the, being able to demonstrate competency across a variety of cultural contexts. So art jewellery provides a critique of social issues, but it's also um, profoundly focused on identity, um, and that's probably because of their intimate connection with the human body. Embodiment. Uh, this is the notion that identity is constricted or negotiated through our bodily interactions in, uh, in daily life. Because of the Cartesian mind-body split that underpins much Western philosophical uh, tradition, if we give this any attention at all, we tend to think of having a body. Whereas here it's thinking through the body, um, getting a sense of ourselves through, the, uh, through our physical frame <coughs> that, that interests me here. So Strange Pleasures is a pilot study, um, ahead of the uh, um, exploring the terrain that I'm going to consider in my doctoral research in the coming years. Um, I'm exploring the degree to which um, jewellery is implicated in the process of creating identity, and I'm exploring the validity of the creative research method, uh, annotated silhouette drawing. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in, in a moment. So those are the research questions that I was exploring. So my method was to recruit four women uh, from a community group in South East Birmingham. I build it as an opportunity to take part in a creative jewellery workshop where they can try on and respond to a range of weird and wonderful jewellery. So there were two parts of the session. Started off with the um, participants talking about their own jewellery. I asked them to bring pieces that they wore regularly um, and there was some discussion about what these pieces meant to them, how they acquired them, what the story was. I then asked them to take a photo of themselves or a partner wearing the jewellery to kind of capture, represent how wearing the jewellery makes them feel. The second half of the session involved them exploring some contemporary art jewellery. I purloined 12 pieces of um, contemporary jewellery from my colleagues at the jewellery school and I invited the participants to handle, try on and eventually select a piece of contemporary jewellery that appealed to them. I asked them to wear that piece of jewellery standing in front of a large piece of white paper and I shone a light at them and drew round the resulting silhouette in pencil. I then provided them with a range of media and asked them to annotate that silhouette, um, again expressing how the piece of jewellery made, uh, made them feel. Lastly, the final task was to direct me taking a photo of them wearing the jewellery. So you can see some of, the, uh, some of the data on the right hand side and some of the jewellery pieces on the, on the left hand side of the screen. So just to give you a flavour of the results, we had um, one participant, Priya, who uh, chose a silver and sapphire ring made by my colleague, Tony, May Tony Maynard. She said she was terrified of drawing, but she still managed to annotate her silhouette with a hat itself, ornamented with a, with a green flower decoration, uh, a cape, cigarette in a holder, and a glass of champagne. She said the, um, the piece of jewellery made her feel elegant, and, um, and the props articulate this, um, albeit through the prism of social class. Katie, this is Katie here, selected a piece of, um, uh, there, yeah, oh, well. selected a, uh, a neck piece, again made by Tony Maynard, which featured a rusted U-bolt. She said it made her feel primal. And reflecting this, she annotated her silhouette with, um, with a shield, knife, and feathered headdress. The photo that she directed me taking um, involved her painting her face with felt-tip war paint. And it seems as if this is a, a kind of an attempt to step back from the highly constructed um, um, bodies of contemporary society um, to arrive at something more natural that she sees reflected in tribal societies. So we get a clear sense of the participants using jewellery to create and articulate their identity. Irving Goffman, 
in his 1959 book, The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life, describes how we seek to present ourselves in the most favourable light. And we can see Priya using what Goffman describes as the sign equipment associated with class to express this in relation to, um, she's kind of pointing at a class that's just above her own in order to flesh out this idea of elegance. Katie's fantasy, there you go, the wall paint on, was a little bit different. She seems to have a connection with the contemporary jewellery that she doesn't have with her own. Um, most of the people selected their jewellery and, um, and then kind of had it next to them while they were drawing it and, and having the photo taken. Katie put her, put her uh, neck piece on and she kind of held onto it tightly throughout the, uh, throughout the session. And at the end she says, as you can see, I can't actually let go of this. In the final photo, she kind of draws strength, she fills the image, uh, her arms stretched out, she's half laughing, half shouting. Uh, and this strength isn't linked to social status, but she seems to find a coherence in, the, in this piece of jewellery that's absent from the kind of badly repaired and ill-fitting pieces of, uh, of her own jewellery that she's kind of gathered along her life journey. And of course, coherence and consistency are, um, are crucial, Goffman says, to putting on a convincing performance. This, on the other hand, is a performance in the making, both at the level of the individual and the group as a whole. The individuals I've asked to, uh, to produce images that capture this experience of, um, of wearing jewellery. And um, for David Gauntlet, a researcher into creativity and identity, describes how giving people a, a, a visual task to do provides them with time to reflect on complex issues and draw out their insights in a non-linear way. In this way, they're kind of engaging in the process of uh, underground incubation. And this is really important with something like embodiment, where thinking about it skews your perspective, as I mentioned at the beginning. The group performance also needs to be uh, constructed too. I've given them a challenging task, and there's no consistency or coherence uh, initially. You see the people engaging, you see the participants engaging in what Goffman describes as the clumsy and embarrassing process of becoming. So everyone stumbles through this process together, and this kind of collusive feeling of intimacy emerges. They're all mothers. Uh, I recruited them through a playgroup. Um, so there's quite a lot of talk about their shared experiences. Childcare features prominent, childbirth features as well. And there's derogation of the absent. So another participant, Jude, her husband is kind of affectionately mocked for bartering down her um, wedding ring from four pounds to three pounds. <laughs> so there are a few things that kind of, um, that kind of mark out this, um, this as a backstage territory. The, the group solidarity, the lack of an audience and the meta-language of, uh, of performance, how they're going to appear in their final photo, all mark this out as a backstage region. They're put on their front again for that final photo, um, but otherwise their guard is down. And that's the beauty of this, um, of this method, I think. I'm interested in identity construction, and by nurturing this backstage environment, I get to see the, the, the dynamic as that identity is created. Goffman makes the point that the performed self emerges out of the interactions in a given situation. It doesn't pre-exist that situation. So by nurturing this environment, with all its inconsistencies and false starts, uh, I get to see how the team works together to support and indulge the, uh, the performances of the others. I get to see the nuances of those, uh, of those interactions, the push-pull of identity formation, where they kind of use their body and their sign equipment, the jewellery, to reach out and communicate with others. But they also kind of rein in their bodily um, kind of interactions in order to maintain expressive control. And for me, it's really encouraging that jewellery gets to play such a, a, a central part in that process as well. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Sean. Are there any final questions? Thank you very much. Um, it was kind of testing ground. Uh, the, as uh, part the art, the, um, the next stage is to develop um, from this process, but to include making in there as well. 
ultimately I'd like to interview people about their about their jewellery, both stuff that they wear day to day and stuff that they've ceased wearing and explore the differences between them. So I'm looking at the differences between their kind of current identities and, um, and those which aren't so current anymore. I'm then going to make jewellery for them that kind of plays on those differences and get them to wear those and keep a, a, a jewellery diary wearing uh, account so that I can analyse that. I'm, I'm really interested in this. Did you ever interview people who are non-jewellery wearers? So somehow we, we, you know, you obviously for the school of jewellery, you're interested in that, but there are people that don't wear jewellery, you know, so how did they create their identities in the same way for their bodies? Um, are they frightened of it? Or? Um, yeah, there's a whole um, continuum of jewellery wearing. I'm yet to meet anybody that wears nothing, um, that's kind of ornamenting rather than, rather than functional. Um, but there's um, uh, Katie, the last, uh, the last person, um, was brought along a, a whole range of stuff that, um, that she kind of brought for show and tell, but she said, I don't wear it if it stays in the box. So it's, it's part of her identity, it tells her story, but she doesn't wear it on a day-to-day on -day basis. But then you get people that, um, I was talking with my students about this kind of backstage, front, front stage thing, and they were saying the first thing they get, uh, that they do when they go home a few of them say the first thing they do when they get home is take everything off. So that the, so that, that kind of marks their their step into the into the backstage region. So n I, n I've never met anybody that, that, that does wear the thing I'm intrigued to. Find anybody to put them the point in my way. When you look at jewelry, <coughs> are you looking at purely items that are on the surface that people are really paying? Or are you just also looking at the entire micro and square? Yes. People may have those for a much longer period. Yes. Struggle with them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's really interesting territory, isn't it? Because it's because it, it's 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 halfway between uh, ornamentation in general. I, I guess I my my left is quite. Wide. Any more questions? Could you all please go with that while there's a session? Thank you.